Romans chapter 5, starting verse, uh, verse 12. I want to just, we've been kind of marching through uh, Romans, uh, and we see Paul wrote this letter, he wanted to get there to see them, but he sends a little bit ahead that, uh, again, if it's God's will, he'll get there, and God used several things to get him there, but he did finally get him there. And he came and he said to the, the people, as he wrote it, I'm under, the obliga I'm under obligation both to the Greek and the barbarians, uh, uh, both to the wise and to the foolish. He's under obligation to preach the gospel. He, and for this, he has said in verse 15, I am eager, he's not only that he's under obligation, but he's eager also to preach the gospel in Rome. And then in verse 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So Paul has this um, this agenda before him and he's going to go forth and he's going to preach the gospel. He says a little later in chapter 1, he talks from about 24 on down, uh, well actually from 18 on down, he talks about the fact that, that, that we turned away from God. We've exchanged the glories of God for the, for the creatures uh, of God. He talks about how he's exchanged them. He talks about they serve the Creator. They all those things, and God says He turns them over to their He turns them over to their uh, lifestyle. And then He goes on to say, "Well, you can't be in a relationship with me, a moralist, a person that is moral. I don't do anything wrong. All those things like that. Uh, that we don't, that does not qualify to be a part of the family of God. And then the religionist." The one who says, well, I went to church, I do all these things, but we've never had a relationship, then that doesn't qualify us to be part of the family of God. And then he says to the Jews, because you have the law, because you have the law, the law is the guidance, but the law can't get you into relationship with, with God. It only shows you where, where you're wrong. And again, so he says to the Jews, also, you need to know Christ. You need to be in a relationship with with, with Jesus Christ. And so he builds that whole thing. And then last week we talked about the benefits of being in relationship with Christ, that we receive his righteousness. And as a result of what he's done, we as believers have peace with God. We have peace with God. Uh, we don't make peace, you and I don't make peace, but we enjoy the peace of God for what he's done by sending his son. And the next portion of chapter 5, uh, it talks about the applicability of righteousness, about how we apply it to our lives. And so the, in, this, in this little segment, uh, little snippet of scripture, it talks about two primary persons in the economy of God. First, Adam. And second, Jesus Christ. When God made Adam and Eve, when he made Adam, he told him that he could not go to the one tree and invite him that fruit. And so they did pretty good until the serpent came and they said, God just doesn't want you to be like him. You don't want to know anything God knows. So go ahead and have a little, have a little bite of her chain. But when Adam sinned, he died. If Adam would have never sinned, and he did, but if he would have, he was, he was built, his body, he was built to live forever. Isn't that interesting? We, he had the capability to live forever. But as a result of sin, sin caused him to die, to be separated from God. And then so uh, the entrance of sin and death came through Adam. Adam sinned, he corrupted himself, and therefore he died. So it was not, uh, he had the option, he had a choice. Uh, man is not condemned uh, to death because of Adam's sin. Man is not condemned to death because of Adam's sin. Scripture clearly say, says, death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For all have sinned. We're going to see that in just a second, but Adam was the one that broke it, but each one of us is responsible for our lives. And we, the Bible said, we talked about this earlier, that for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody is with sin. 
And, and the law doesn't protect us because we cannot keep the law. And being religious or being a moralist does not get us into a relationship with God the Father. It's only through Jesus Christ. And, and God made a decision that he was going to send his son so that we as, as the lost would have a choice to either accept or reject Christ. To either receive the, the scale side of staying in debt or death, or to accept Christ and to have life and life eternally. That's that's the challenge. That's the challenge that we have. So many people try to make. Uh, they try to add. They add. They have. You, if you do these things and add Jesus, or if you have Jesus and add this to it, then you're okay. But the Bible is clear throughout the Scripture. It says. All we need is Jesus. We don't need anything else. It's Jesus. And Jesus is going to bring salvation. And out of our life in Christ, we become people that care for other people, that look after other people, that help other people. We become people that are interested in the lives of others. And as a result of that, we want to see them restored restored in their life to Jesus Christ. And, and Paul's real clear about this in this whole book. Next week we're going to start talking about sanctification, about the fact that once we accept Christ and are justified, then we begin to live our life out in the process the Holy Spirit in, uh, invades our lives and we begin to live out that life, that life. And many of us, we may accept Christ as Savior and we pass away. But the reality is for most of us, we accept Christ as Savior sometime in our life and then we live out the process until death. And that process in Christ is called sanctification. When we meet Christ in the air, when He takes us home, that's glorification. At that point we are we are in, in heaven. We're glorified. But most of us live our life out in this process of being sanctified. And then to be set apart is the idea to be holy. But we do that not that we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. We have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to us when we accept Jesus as our Savior. So in these little passages, this little short piece of passage, he's going to talk about the old man, the Adam, the dead man, and he's going to talk about the new man, Christ. And so we have an option. So let's start. In verse 12, therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. There was not, there's nobody that misses that except Christ. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of Jesus Christ. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Remember that Adam and Eve were created, they lived out their life for a long time. Then Moses, later on in the, um, the stretch of time, Moses was given the law. Prior to the law, they did, sin wasn't imputed because that doesn't mean they, they still died, they still sinned, but they didn't have something to recognize. Verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the events of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Adam was a type of Jesus Christ. Adam had the potential until he moved away from God to, to live a life, uh, a perfect life in Christ. Not in Christ, but a perfect life. But because sin came, he, he grabbed onto it and he broke what the relationship with God and the Father. And then, uh, but the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression, by the transgression of the one that the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. Jesus Christ's death is open to the world, it is open to all people. Now, some people have never heard the name of Jesus. And so we have a responsibility in our, as, as people of God to get the word to those that are lost. God didn't set aside, here's a group of people, don't go to them because they're a bunch of scoundrels, we don't want anything to do to them. No. God wants us to minister. He wants us to minister to the whole world. And, and really, that sometimes is a challenge for us because 
in our uh, minds. We don't know who we like and who we don't like, who we think we don't. But one of the things that, uh, that we need to understand as people of God is that he's called us. He's called us to the whole world. In the Christian Missionary Alliance, we, you, the funds we send, the money that we send, we are working around the world right now and have been working for years around the world to proclaim the gospel in some of the most difficult spots in the world. We've been, the, the Alliance has been faithful to reach out to the world. And so we have, uh, one, just to give you an example, we have about six million members in the, in the Christian Missionary Alliance. There's less than a million, right around a million people in the United States. The rest of the Alliance family, five million plus, are around the world. That's because in the early part of the church, a multitude of people were sent out to reach the laws. And, and as a result of that, we, we don't have really a whole lot of really big churches because the emphasis has always been to be people that study the scripture and just send their money to go around the world. So that's really kind of the, the mission emphasis of the Alliance. But we see that one man, sin entered in and death entered in, and, and then we see that the, that the second Adam was born. He did not sin. He became the perfect sacrifice to, to lay his life down on the cross. He shed his blood. There has to be, in the covenant, there has to be blood. He shed his blood and it washes us clean. And we then can be in relationship with God the Father. But also, it's not just a, it's a once for all thing, but if we, we then uh, live that out. And as we grow, and we're going to talk about that as we go further, as we talk about being sanctified, we're going to grow in the faith, which causes us to grow in the world to share with others. I, uh, I find it kind of uh, offensive because in the, in the news where they say, People that uh, supported one party, they're racist, they're bigots, they're all that stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you that um, there was a time probably when I was, but my life is more about helping people get to where they need to be in their relationship with Christ than worrying about their skin color, worrying about their accents, worrying about any of that thing. As, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we have one mission, and that's to reach those that don't know Him. And that becomes our motivation, that becomes uh, what we do to make others in a relationship with the Father. And the, <clears throat> verse 16, and the gift uh, is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one transgression, resulting in condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift arose from many transgressions, resulting in justification. What he's saying there is that many people have done many things that were against God. But, but Jesus died to cover them all. He didn't just select, oh, here's three of them I'm going to take care of. He covers all. Uh, past, present, and future. He covers them all. And our relationship becomes inclusive in the midst of God. It's an amazing thing when you think about it. For if by the transgressions of one, verse 17, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. We will reign, we will reign with Jesus Christ. You and I will be taken into heaven with Jesus and we will reign with him. What an enormous responsibility. It's not just about today, but it's about for eternity. And it's about this idea that when we come to know him, he empowers us. He empowers us to live in a way that brings glory to Him and others to know Him. So then, as though through one transgression the result of condemnation to all men, even so, through one act of righteousness there resulted justification of life to all men. Adam's led to condemnation. He led to death, separation from God. But Jesus that where if we come to know him, we are justified, we are justified, we are set right to be in a relationship with God the Father, and it is open, it is open to all men. What, what an amazing fact that is. How we try to live a thing, we try to live a God, but God has called us, he's called us to the world. Now, we may not be able to get to the world, 
ourselves, but we can get there by prayer. We can get there by uh, by giving to others. Uh, one of the things that really God wants us to do is be people of prayer, to pray for others, to get to be cognizant of the fact of how so many people in our world yet today have never heard the name of Jesus. We can we can be affected by prayer. For as though through the one uh, man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so, through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. Even though Adam's sin sent men, are many into disobedience, Jesus Christ, if we respond to him, we are made righteous. We are right, righteous. In verse 20, and the law came in that the transgression might, might increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. When the law came, then we realized the things that we're doing wrong. Before the law, when Adam was an evil here, before the law, it wasn't really imputed because you couldn't tell all the death that it in. It wasn't, they weren't getting by with it. It's just the death that it in. That as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to uh, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We, we see the contrast. We see death, life. We see in Deuteronomy, God said, I give you uh, life and I give you death. Choose life. Choose life. And that's still the same today. God gives us life and he gives us death. And he says to us, choose life. Choose life. People say, I don't want, I don't want to have all those rules and restrictions on me. I don't want all that stuff. I can't do all this. Well, the reality is, that when we come to know Christ, He fulfills all those rules, He sets us free, and we have the liberty to live within that because of Him in us. What, what a tremendous God we serve. What a, what a, when we begin to realize, when we begin to realize what He has done for us, and why, while He did it while we were yet sinners, while most of us would turn away from people like that, He came and died and resurrected, and he draws us to himself. And so when we go into the world, when we go leave this place, when we go into the world, we, we need to be carriers, we are carriers of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that is within us. And we need to be people that, that react and empower people to be drawn to Jesus Christ who gives, who gives eternal life. There's only one who gives eternal life, and that's Jesus Christ. And we must, we must be diligent in sharing that with the world. You know, there's all kinds of opportunities. I got a, I got a, uh, I got a uh, YouTube video from uh, a while ago, but I, uh, it was the the baseball announcer, or the head announcer for the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, Jerry Howard. You probably don't really be familiar with him, but Jerry uh, has been a Christian for a number of years. He shares his testimony on this YouTube video. A guy came and interviewed him, and he said, uh, he talked to him about the interviewer was wanting to be a Christian broadcaster, and Jerry's testimony is known across Canada, and also the U.S., as a matter of fact, but but the interesting thing was, uh, 30 plus years ago, uh, I started a Bible study in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And it met every Monday night, we had about 100 and some people that came. And one of my good friends, Don Gordon, was, was the pitcher for the, well, he was with the Indians actually for a while, but he was a friend of Jerry's, he was with Toronto. And he invited Jerry and his wife to the Bible study. And Jerry and uh, his wife came and and he says on the video, he said that, um, that he met the Lord at a Bible study in Carpenter Springs, headed by Barry Manter, who was the president of Trinity College, and that he, that, that really began his journey for over 30 years of, uh, of his life. But, but wherever he goes, and he's invited to speak, it's kind of like Bernie Harwell in Canada, he talks about the fact that he met the Lord in this little community in Florida. And sometimes, you know, I, it doesn't ever say anything about me, which is fine. That's not the point. The point is that out of our efforts, a lot of being diligent in what God's called us to do, we never know 
We never know who's going to cross our path and impact millions of people for Christ. And so, I, I, the guy said to this because he did, used to come to the study as well, and I, it was really cool because sometimes in our uh, life, we don't get to see what's happened after we leave. You know, and one of the things, particularly in Christian work, we, sometimes we never, we never encounter those that, that have been impacted. But I tell you that because the things that you do, the littlest thing, and you may not get any credit for it, it doesn't make any difference. Because you may impact someone who impacts someone else, who impacts someone else, and ultimately it begins to just move through the whole world. And, and to think that we could, we as just people here in this little spot, could be people that impacted the whole world is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing, really, when you think about it. And it's one of the great things about being a follower of Christ, because no matter how uh, or who we impact, we never know where God's going to take it. So I, I encourage you, we're coming to Christmas, we're coming to Thanksgiving, we're coming to this time of year when people begin to think about some things besides a gathering, all kinds of stuff. But it's oftentimes a real time of hardship, it's a real time of loneliness, it's a time of pain. And we need to be sensitive, we need to be sensitive to the things that we encounter. So I challenge you this next, this next six weeks as we go to Christmas or eight weeks or whatever it is that but I'm not going to challenge you to do anything other than be aware of those around you. And if God makes you aware of somebody around you, that you do something about it. Lord, we thank you for our time. We thank you for your word. We just give you praise, Father, that Jesus was willing to come and to to just to, he would be willing to lay his life down for a sinner so he die. And Father, sometimes we just think we're kind of going through the motions and that really nothing's what's happening. We don't really even know. But, but Father, we it's really, uh, we just do what you tell us and the rest is up to you. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be faithful in the things that you call us to do. The things that you show us to do. And we pray, Father, that each of us would be have a sensitivity to touch others for you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, well, let's stand. We're going to sing together our God bless America. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you.